Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text is the Gospel. We read from John chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's command and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friend if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. All right, confirmands. Let's just talk for a few moments here. I brought something that we have in our house. Maybe you guys have these too. Can you see that? These are conversation starter napkins. Totally designer. This one has an important question for us. What did you do to change the world today? And the kid on this, I don't know, you probably can't read it. It says, I changed my socks. That counts. (laughs) It's kind of silly, but what did you do to change the world? Did you come in here today thinking that that's what you were going to do? Change the world? Probably not. And we're not thinking about you're going to do something that is going to be so far-fetched and so out there that the whole world is going to take notice. But what you're doing today is you're pledging to be faithful to the Lord and that you would rather die than to break that promise of faithfulness to the Lord. So in your own small way, in the world that will be around you, you're asking the Lord to help you change the world. But let's remember how we're going to do that. We change the world by remaining in Christ's love. For you to be motivated to do that, I just want you and everyone here to know that Christ is our friend, our dear friend, who lets us know that he loves us so that we can love others too. You guys, when you think about Jesus, I'm sure you think of Jesus as first, we talked about him this past week. He is God, 100% God, 100% man. He's my Savior. But Jesus is also your friend. And he qualifies why he's our friend today. He says this, I have called you friends. For everything I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. Everything that the Father has, Jesus has made known to us. He tells us everything as a good friend. And by God's grace, myself, Pastor Husson, Pastor Free, and the teachers you've had at St. Paul's or in your Sunday school lessons or your parents at home, they've been doing the very same thing, introducing you to your friend, to Jesus. You and I have had the privilege together this year to review just what kind of a friend Jesus is for us. We got to talk about how we, looking, we looked at the commandments, And we got to look at all ten commandments of the Lord and we looked at each one and every time we looked at each one of those commandments, we said, what a failure. Me. Us. Every one of the commands that God places before us, we've broken them. We're failures. But what did our friend Jesus do? At the end of every command, we got to think about how Jesus was perfect in that obedience to that command And he was perfect for us. He's the friend who says, don't worry, I'll cover you. Cover you with my death on the cross. You're forgiven. What a friend. He lets us know the debt that we had so we didn't look foolish before the Lord on the last day and then says, I will fix that problem for you. That's your friend. That's our friend together, guys. Jesus. But you learn more about him. You learn that this friend, Jesus, as he is the one who's going to fix our sin, 
He is the one we learn exactly how he did it through the, through the creed. Everything that he was willing to do for us, become like us, humble himself to be one of us, to take upon himself flesh and to save us. And we learn that our friend not only was willing to save us, but we can go to him in any trouble, with any concern, any problem, and he's going to listen to us like every good friend would. Not just to say, yeah, 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 we're in the same boat, but to say, how can I help you? And we learned how Jesus is willing to do what is best for us, even when we're hoping for something else. That's a true friend. And Jesus, we find that not only can we pray to him, but he's the one who comes and pursues us. By starting something called baptism, way before we were ever in this world, and our Lord Jesus came to us in baptism and says, my life is your life now. Enjoy it. My privilege is your privilege. Life, eternal life in heaven is yours. And our good friend Jesus knows that it's not just a one-time thing that we need him to be by our side. And so Jesus, he gives us what you're going to experience for the first time today, the Lord's Supper. Your good friend is going to come to you there with his forgiveness and his life through his body and blood, with the bread and wine. And to say, I know your hearts can be heavy with sin. And I know that you may feel separated from me, but here I am for you today through this sacrament. That's your friend. And I am privileged. I got to teach you guys two years, most of you two years, and to teach you that awesome truth. Jesus is your friend, as well as your Savior and your Lord. What a friend. I feel like kind of like a, a parent right now where the parents are bringing you to a playground when you're a kid, and you're going to have a play date at the playground or at a, at a park. And there's going to be another mom come in, and she's going to bring her friend, or excuse me, her child. And as she brings her child, you and that child go off and play. Well, our father has brought his son to you, and I've been able to do that, and now it's time for you guys to go off and play with Christ. Now, your formal education is kind of done when it comes to spiritual growth. We're going to have plenty of opportunities for you to keep growing in your faith here. But no one's going to stand over you now here at St. Paul's and say, did you learn your memory work? Did you fill your worship summary? Did you get it done? That's not going to happen anymore. It's time for you to go off and play with your friend, with Jesus. What I mean by that is now it's time for you to take your friend Jesus with you off into the world. It's kind of a crazy thought. To think about your friend, Jesus, going with you wherever you go in the future now. That's what we do with our friends. We take our friends with us. We enjoy our friends. Here, Jesus specifically wants us to take him with him, or with us, wherever we go. Now, take it from one who is older, who has lived in this world a little bit. There are a lot of things to distract us in this world. And there are a lot of people in this world. Truly are. A ton of people and a ton of things to distract us. Friends that are so curious and interesting, so unique and varied. And you know this, Jesus, you've been seeing him, hearing his word, studying him, finding out what he has done for you again and again. And that kind of is just your life. But there's new things out there that you haven't seen and done. There'll be new responsibilities given to you, like driving a car if you aren't doing that already. Um, there'll be new experiences of going to high school, taking on more responsibility of deciding where your future is going to be. And the reality is, we can get wrapped up in all that glitz and glamour that the world will throw at us. We could get wrapped up in, in relationships and individuals that are around us, and we can forget Jesus, our friend. Jesus wants us to stay, to remain in his love. And this is my prayer for you too. The reality is, though, we talked about this in class. Our synod average was told at one time to be about 40% of a class of confirmands 
will forget their friend Jesus. It's a startling and frightening statistic. 40%, almost half. We want to see the reality that we too can devalue and degrade our connection to Christ. We can say, yeah, I know Jesus is important. You're important to me, but I'm busy. I've got to get my homework done. I don't have time for personal Bible study. I've got so much stuff to do today with homework. I don't have time to stay one more hour and go to Bible class. I have all these issues and so much fun that we forget, to leave, we forget and leave Jesus at home in our conduct and our behavior with our friends when we're at school. I have so much work and money that needs to be earned and my future to think about that I don't have time to commit those plans to the Lord. Take it from one who is older, me too. I have struggled in this to apply God and His love, my friend Jesus, to my life and my actions. Jesus says to you and to me, greater love has no one than this, than He laid down His life or his friends. If you could think of anyone else who had a bigger purpose and a more important purpose, I would be surprised. Jesus had the biggest purpose in this world ever to be our Savior. And really, this applied to him, right? What did you do to change the world? Jesus' whole life was to change the world. Every day it was constant obedience to the Lord. Every day it was here in this world among sinful people, not giving in to sin and temptation for you. So that you could have a friend like Jesus who could save us and deliver us. Jesus is that one who gave up his life to change your world. To change all our worlds. What a friend. We know we sing that song, what a friend we have in Jesus. He bears everything for you and me and gives us everything. His entire life, his eternity is our eternity. Everlasting goodness and life and love. There are a lot of things in this world, but there is nothing that has greater value than your connection to Christ and his life for you. Enjoy your friend Jesus. We've been talking a lot about your world being changed by Him. But I want you to think about now your life in changing the world around you. This confirmation isn't just about rejoicing that you know Jesus, but it's also about then you saying, now Jesus, change the world around me. And how are you going to do that? Jesus makes it plain in our lesson. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. He would say too, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Bear fruit, loving others. Following our God and his commands. That's a tall order. And it might seem daunting when you think about your future and you don't even know what's going to be happening, what you could be doing in eight years. You could be in the workforce already, working full time. You could have a job and career and you could even be, possibly be close to marriage or married. A ton of things can happen in these few short years. How do you go forward? When you think about all that could happen to you, remember your friend Jesus. He's the reason we will follow him and change the world around us by remaining in his love. He says to us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I love those words, and I pray that you do too. Those powerful words let us know it's not an accident that we're here today. That everything that is happening right now has been our God's plan. He chose us before the beginning of the world, to be his children. There are billions of people in this world. Billions. And yet God chose us to be here today. And to be before him and to hear of his love for us. What an awesome gift that God has given to us. His perfect love in his son Jesus 
And Jesus chooses to reveal that to you and to me by telling us of Him as that vine who brings us all good things. Rejoice in that. Jesus has not withheld one good thing from you. He gave His life for you. He cannot give you anything greater than His life. And it's yours. Even though you and I sin every single day, they're gone. And instead, and in place of that sin and the sentence that should go along with it, there is life and forgiveness and love every single day. Remain in God's love, dear children. And love God's commands. That's a tall order. But remember we talked about this is kind of your time now to go and play. To take Jesus with you wherever you go. It's kind of neat to think what the Lord will bring before you through high school and college. What kind of opportunities are going to be opened up before you? What will you be able to do? What will you be able to experience? Will you be able to travel abroad? Will you study abroad? Will you take masters? Will you go on and on in education? Whatever it might be, or joining the work world, you get to take Jesus with you. And you get to think about how do you love God's command wherever you go. That first commandment is you shall have no other gods. We should fear and love and trust in God above all things. You've had mom and dad to help you, but now you're going to gain independence soon. And you get to think about how are you going to take Jesus with you and make him number one, even though you have more responsibilities of study, of sports, of other activities that are brought before you. And you get to wrestle with this first command, with Jesus himself. But that's the joy. Jesus is going with you to wrestle with you with his word. You get to wrestle with that understanding of how do I put Jesus first. Don't be afraid of these opportunities, but rejoice and embrace them. Think about the relationships you will have. Maybe this is the time where you're starting to think about the opposite sex. And you get to show love there by bringing Jesus with you into that, that relationship. By remembering what we learned in Ephesians 5, where we get to think of Jesus and the church, and that is the relationship we are to have with the opposite sex. One of submission and service to another. Think about how that will change the world it will change the way people see love and understand love around you. By the way you treat others with service and respect. Or think about the, the people you're going to experience, the people that will hate you and dislike you, call you names and pick on you. You get to think about God's word, like the fifth commandment, to respect and honor your neighbor's life. And change the way that people react to criticism, to it's not criticism, but to picking on, to bullying, by showing love. The love that you found in Christ. Who when he was, being, when he was suffering injustice, he said, Father, forgive them. The one who told his disciples what love is, it is to turn the cheek. If someone asks for you to go one mile, go two. That kind of idea. Jesus has given you the opportunity to love a friend and not just love a friend, but love your enemies as well. The world is always looking out for number one, but Jesus says, no, I will be with you and support you and encourage you and help you and love you. So love those who hate you. It's going to be challenging to love the Lord and to follow his commands, to take the third commandment and remember God's word as, as it is, to gladly hear and learn it. Because there's going to be so much wisdom of the world thrown at you through your education in the few years. But remember Jesus. His word. It makes us wise for salvation. It is God-breathed. Jesus tells us it is the truth. And the only truth. And it is the power of salvation. You can change the world around you by reminding people that there is hope, there is truth, there is certainty found in my friend Christ. 
And when you're wondering what you are to do in life, and you're trying to figure out what life will be like, you get to remember this good news. Jesus is with us always to the very end of the age. So go and follow his commands. He will be with you no matter what. No matter what you experience, he will always be walking with you and can be found walking with you in his word. Change the world by loving others and loving God and his commands. Today, as much as we say, what did you do to change the world? That's what you're going to do here in a few moments, you could say. I'm going to be the one who's going to be different from this world. I want you to remember that the only reason you can do this is because Jesus has changed your world already. This has been my greatest pleasure for you, is to be able to share that with you week in and week out in catechism. Jesus loves you. He is your friend. And it's my prayer that you go forward with him and that you remain in him now and always. Amen. It's Jesus who says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I, excuse me, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. We now have our sermon.